This conference will now be recorded. Okay, let's start the session. It's about the practicals about Fillot's tumor of breast. Okay. What is Fillot's tumor? It is a benign stromal tumor. Like fibroadenoma, it arises from intralocular stroma, but are much less common. Fibroadenomas are more usually uh, seen in female breasts. Okay, they are the most common stromal tumors. Next to stromal tumors, these are phyllode tumor, which are less common, and they arise from intralobular stroma. Although they can occur at any age, most present in the sixth decade, that is 10 to 20 years later than the peak age for fibroadenomas. Fibroadenomas occur usually between 35 to 45 years, and this phyllode tumor occurs 10 to 20 years later, that is in the sixth decade. Okay, the majority are detected as palpable masses, but a few are found by mammography. These are detected as palpable masses clinically. Okay, cystosarcoma phyllodes is a term sometimes used for these lesions. Cystosarcoma phyllodes is also used, but most commonly phyllode tumor is preferred. However, phyllode tumor is preferred since most behave in a relatively benign fashion and are not cystic. These are benign tumors. And these are not cystic disease of the breast. Okay, phyllode tumor associated with clonal acquired chromosomal changes with gains in chromosome 1q being the most frequent. The most frequent chromosome changes gain in chromosome 1q. Okay, increased numbers of chromosomal aberrations and overexpression of the homeobox transcription factor that is HOXB13. This is a homobox transcription factor which, which of which its overexpression or aberration may lead to development of phyllode tumor. Okay. These are associated with higher tumor grade and more aggressive clinical behavior. Coming to morphology, the tumors vary in size from a few centimeters to massive lesions involving the entire breast. Okay. It may, may vary from size from few centimeters to or it may involve the whole breast. The larger lesions often have bulbous protrusions. Okay, these bulb bulbous protrusions are phyllodes. It is a Greek word for leaf-like. Leaf-like pattern is seen in these phyllodes. Okay, due to the presence of nodules of proliferating stroma covered by epithelium. Here, it is a intralobular stroma and there will be a proliferating stroma, nodules of proliferating stroma covered by epithelium. Okay. Leaf-like leaf -like bulbous protrusions are seen. In some tumors, these protrusions extend into a cystic space. This growth pattern can also occasionally be seen in larger fibroadenomas and is not an indication of malignancy. This pattern is also seen in fibroadenoma. Phyllode tumors are distinguished from fibroadenomas on the basis of higher cellularity, higher mitotic rate, nuclear pleomorphism, stromal overgrowth, and infiltrative borders. These are all the distinguishing features of phyllode tumor from, from fibroadenoma. What are those? Higher cellularity, higher mitotic rate, nuclear pleomorphism, stromal overgrowth and infiltrative borders. Okay, low-grade lesions resemble fibroadenomas but are more cellular and mitotically active. High-grade lesions may be difficult to distinguish from malignant sarcomas and may have foci of mesenchymal differentiation. Example, resembling rhabdomyosarcoma or liposarcoma. Okay, low-grade lesions may resemble fibroadenomas. But distinguishing feature is it is more cellular and more mitotically active. High-grade lesions may be difficult to distinguish from malignant sarcomas and may have foci of mesenchymal differentiation. Okay, coming to gross features, grossly the tumor is generally large, 10 to 15 centimeters in diameter, round to oval, has a bosselated appearance and less fully encapsulated than a fibroid tumor. Okay, the bosselated appearance, leaf-like bosselated appearance is seen grossly. Okay, on cut surface, it is gray-white, 
with cystic cavities, areas of hemorrhages, necrosis, and degenerative changes. See, this is the gross specimen we have. Um, This is the gross specimen we have. This is a okay. This is a tumor of the breast showing a leaf like leaf like pattern, gray white leaf like pattern. Okay, and we can see cystic spaces, cystic spaces, and areas of necrosis also can be seen. Okay, that section of breast specimen showing large mass measuring 20 into 10 centimeter. Okay, this is a cut section of a breast specimen showing a large mass. This is whole of the breast. Okay, the mass is occupying whole of the breast. Okay. It is about 20 to 10 centimeters occupying the whole breast, which is lobulated. This is lobulated. See, we have one lobule, we have one lobule, one lobule, one lobule. Okay, lobulated and has a leaf like pattern with areas of necrosis. Okay, Bin okay diagnosis benign fill load tumor of breast. What are the microscopic features? Histologically, the fill load tumor is composed of an extremely hypercellular stroma accompanied by benign ductal structures okay extremely hypercellular stroma okay this is a intralobular stroma tumor so hypercellular stroma accompanied by the ductal structures are benign okay thus pillow tumor resembles fibroadenoma except for marked stromal overgrowth only difference is between fibroadenoma and pillow is marked stromal growth Histological criteria to distinguish benign, borderline, and malignant categories. In Philo's tumor, there are three categories benign, borderline, and malignant categories. And this is distinguished from one another based on following cellular features of stroma. What are those? Frequency of mitosis, cellular atypia, cellularity, and infiltrative margins. Okay. If the frequency of mitosis is more, it comes under malignant. And more cellular ATP, more cellularity, and more infiltrative margins, this all comes under malignant, whereas less frequency of mitosis, less ATP, less cellularity, and there is no absence of infiltrative margins, means it is a benign pillow stroma. This is a microscopic picture showing stromal overgrowth. See, more cellularity, and see. The ducts are compressed. The ducts are compressed and in the leaf like duct. Okay, leaf like duct. That's having cellular stroma. The most pillow tumor are low grade, will occasionally recur locally, but do not metastasize. In contrast, intermediate and high grade pillow tumors often recur locally unless they are treated with wide excision or mastectomy. Regardless of rate, lymphatic spread is rare and axillary lymph node defection is contraindicated. There is no metastasis, there is no lymphatic spread and 
Ideally, we would not dissection is contraindicated. The uncommon high grade lesions give rise to distinct hematogenous metastasis in about one third. High grade lesions are very uncommon, and in these high grade lesions, only one third cases will have distant hematogenous metastasis. There will be no lymphatic spread, only the stomal component metastasis. Okay, this is about Willard Schumer. Once look at the cross specimen, this is a specimen of breast showing a large tumor mass measure, uh, measuring about 20 into 10 centimeter which is gray white and lobulated occupying all the whole of the breast tissue and having leaf like patterns lobules leaf like pattern okay there are a few cystic spaces and areas of necrosis can be seen this is about benign phyllode tumor okay this comes the end of the uh, this session this is the benign phyllode tumor this is the gross specimen you will have okay thank you